What is up dudes and lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Nuts guys. Today we are taking a look at Ritual Beast. Now this is an interesting deck here um, because it just got the buff from the June 2020 ban list. Only three cards removed but one of them god damn it was Ulti Hawk from one to three and we will take that because that is actually like a pretty significant buff for the deck one of the biggest reasons is not actually that three conahawk is amazing but it's a like because you go into like three and it's like unbeatable mainly though it's actually because we can play extravagance now and one of the biggest problems for me when i was playing this deck is consistency 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 i just would see brick hand after brick hand because like if you don't see a two card combo in your hand you're probably not doing a whole lot right so with Extravagance, you just have a, some really, really needed draw power to help you uh, see your combos much more easily, uh, as well as a new card that we'll talk about that we'll be getting in the future. So this is kind of a future build of Ritual Beasts uh, there, and all you have to do is not hit all three Conahawk off of an Extravagance, and you still get to play the game. So without further ado, let's just jump into this list and see what we're looking at here. Today, we're starting off with our uh, regular Ritual Beast. We've got the three Kanahawk, the two Rampengu. I know sometimes people play three, but now it's actually searchable, which is pretty clean. Um, the one Apelio, just for the name, and the uh, two Winda. This one's actually not searchable, but still, it's really nice that it counts as either a Ritual Beast or a Spiritual Beast Tamer. Uh, really, really nice that it has that dual synergy, as well as its destruction effect, which actually comes up as well if you can get your opponent to trigger it. Um, really good. Almost makes it feel like a um, Unchained monster at that point. Um, then for the actual like uh, Tamers, you've got your three Elders, your... Uh, one Lara, your one Zephyr and Pilica, specifically because this card is 1500 or less defense, we'll get to that in a minute, and then uh, the Ritual Beast Tamer Wen, she specials from your Banish Zone, all pretty standard, I don't think this is like anything too crazy, maybe ratios might have been tweaked here a little bit here or there in the past, but for now, I think this will be fairly standard, uh, and then we get to the other new card, so this is the card that we actually just don't have confirmed for any sets yet, um, we just, we know we'll get it at some point, but it's here for now, this is Win the Wind Medium, if you don't know what this card does, it says you can discard it alongside with any other wind monster to add any wind monster with 1500 or less defense from your deck to your hand. So search as any wind with 1500 or less defense, that's the main thing. Um, and yeah, that's like so clean because this is now a three of in the deck that essentially can just be, or at least search you, any other card you want. Like if you have Tamer, you get Conahawk. If you have Conahawk, you get Elder. Sorry, not Tamer, I meant Elder. Um, and then other situations, like sometimes you don't have either of those, you just want to like discard this in a monster and then reborn the monster you discarded with it. So you discard and grab Zephyr and Pilica, normal Zephyr and Pilica, Zephyr and Pilica on normal can reborn one from the grave, and there you go, there's two two Ritual Beast monsters on field. So that's why I like the Zephyr and Pilica. Unfortunately, Lara is not searchable because it has 2,000 defense, not 1,500 or less. It's the only one other than... Um, when window that's not searchable so that's the main reason i'm just playing the zephyr and pilica and it's another name so that's kind of cool but yeah really really nice uh, search card here very nice for consistency it's not just draw power it's like targeted searches for like what you actually need to like make your hand better which is really clean even if it is a minus one in nature Moving on, though, we've got three copies of Ash and two Nibiru. These are some hand traps here. Ash, just pretty standard, just nice and good versus everything. Uh, and Nibiru. Nibiru has a specifically, like, busted synergy in this deck because you can dodge your own Nibiru or your opponent's Nibiru, making them pretty much completely dead uh, if you're able to do your plays right. So the idea here is that Conahawk can tag out as cost... Uh, as a quick effect. So on your opponent's turn, if they've summoned five times, you can go Conahawk, chain link one, tag out. So tree like sh shuffles itself back into the extra deck as cost. And then you chain Nibiru, which then will tribute the entire board, give your opponent the token, give yourself the Nibiru, and then the Conahawk will resolve to special back your two banished uh, ritual beast monsters, which then just uh, like aren't affected by Nibiru, never were, and you lost literally no value, but still being able to Nibiru on your opponent's turn very effectively. So that's like the cool synergy there. Made me want to play it at some ratio. And also we just have to play hand traps right now. The format requires it, so I want to throw them in. Then for the spells, just three extravagance and the one dimensional fissure. Um, nothing too crazy here. I mean, extravagance, draw two, great. Uh, and then D-Fish is just so good. I mean, like, play the macro, too. I'm sure you can already see it down there. This is just one of those situations where, given the right matchup, 
D. Fisher and Macrocosmos on, almost feel like how Imperial Order feels versus Sky Strikers. Like, if you play like something like Burning Abyss, or I'm trying to think of, like, good examples, like Salamangri, like, those decks just, like, do not play through this, like, at all. Like, they need a very specific hand to be able to out this, and even if they do, they probably would have had to, like, sacrifice some resources in the first place. Like, they would have had to sacrifice stuff like, um like, linking off their monsters just to get the Sunlight Wolf in the first place, and they already lost, like, a Spinny. They linked off a Jack Jaguar. They linked off a Foxy. Lost resources that otherwise would have been there for them later on in the duel just to out one card, and it puts them in, like, such an awkward spot, um, which is really cool. Um, there, so it's a cool floodgate, and also just, like, you want your stuff banished more than you want engraved, so it's almost like a, an assisting, like, combo piece as well. Um, and then we move to the traps where we have three ritual beast steeds. You gotta play this card at three. It's insane. Doesn't target. You can pop up to upwards of four to five mo like monsters at the same time. So insane. Uh, two copies of ambush. I like two because I am playing like a copy of trap trick. So it gives us a little extra bit of like flexibility in being able to get this. It's a really nice follow up play though, especially as a tamer and a spiritual beast from either banished or the graveyard. Uh, three Imperm, pair the Imperm with the Ash and the Nibiru, and it gives you a nice little cluster of hand traps, so hopefully if you are going second, you can uh, do something to not let your opponent go wambo-cambo all over your business. Um, then we have two Compulses, just another little utility card here, just so versatile, Good, go like a good trap going second, um, good trap going first, I just think it's versatile, helps the deck. Uh, the one trap trick, I would have liked to play a little more than one trap trick, but I just thought, like, I really liked the other cards I had, and I didn't want to squeeze in an extra trap trick, lower our consistency, uh, if I didn't have to. So this was kind of like the 40th card in the deck, but it's a nice versatile 40th card in the deck, because it can be either popping multiple cards with steeds, a follow-up play in ambush, a monster negate with impermanence, or, or a monster bounce with compulse. So there's just so many different ways this card can be used, so just a one of is nice. Two strike, again, another good trap going second. Like, you set this and a compulse or a steeds going going second into a board. You try and steeds them. When they try and negate it with something like a Boral Savage, you can just strike the Boral Savage. Then they can't even respond to the chain anymore without their own counter trap, and they just lose their board. Not too shabby. And the last card is Macrocosmos. We showed this before. This one's even worse, even like, well, worse, but I say better. It's slower because it has to be set for a turn, but it also keeps any card, right? Uh, yeah, keeps any card from uh, ending up in grave and instead getting banished. So versus Eldritch, this is like auto win, like straight up. Uh, it's crazy. So, yeah. Um, so that's it for the 40 card main deck, and then we move to the extra. The extra deck is super, super simple. Uh, we've got Conahawk, three Conahawk. Like I said before, all you have to do is not banish all three Conahawk off of your first extravagance, and you have a very good chance to win the duel. Um,. Three ulti Apelio, just a nice one. He's kind of like the big Chungus beater when he goes into battle phase. He um, is unaffected by other card effects, which is pretty cool. Puts a lot of damage out. Uh, ulti Petalfin, this one's not even that important, but sometimes it's nice to have because it's just a big booty, and that's it. <laughs> I don't know, it's not that important. Ulti Petal is a little more important, I guess, mainly just if Winda ever gets destroyed, she can just special this straight from the deck, uh, or from the extra deck, and it will just be, like, a big beater for you, which is pretty cool, so I'm into it, I'm into that, and then our Link Monster, this is the other one, this is the second most important card in the extra deck outside of Conahawk, just such a good extender, it gives you an extra normal summon, as well as it gives you a buff to stuff to really help you push for big damage, and it has that quick effect, just like the other ones do, to just tag out at a moment's notice to dodge any kind of removal, making this deck very very hard to deal with and it's extra deck monsters very hard to deal with once you get um into your extra deck monsters so your opponent doesn't, really doesn't want you to get that far um and then the last card i played was two lightning chidori i just thought this is cool like mo almost all your stuff is like level fours or at least you have a lot of them like there's three four five six seven eight uh seven eight and then well it's not a ton it's only eight but it can totally come up and in those situations lightning chidori is just such good removal i mean it's literally like put a, a set card back on the into the deck and then put a, a face up card back into the deck in one turn so it's just so strong and it's a 1900 beater it's a good card um so i thought why not just have like extra solid removal to finish off our extra deck here but yeah there's a couple other options here i have as well just in terms of side deck stuff dimension uh, shifter is pretty cool just because like i said before this deck actually likes having its stuff banished so it's almost like thunder dragons when they were playing this like it's, it's a decent hand trap versus some strategies but also uh, it pushes their strategy a little bit triggers their banished effects um, so that's kind of cool there potential hand trap probably like more of a side deck card though 
Um, win is an interesting link as well, just because you can make it with any two monsters in the strategy, and then potentially reborn like a martial mental marcher or something from your opponent's uh, graveyard, and just, I don't know, if you wanted to play a cool link three, you could go into it or something. I don't know. It's just interesting. Uh, Phantasme, another hand trap I think is pretty interesting in this deck, just because, like I said before, you want the right combination of like a two-card combo in your hand. So just being able to Phantasme your opponent lets you draw more cards, try and pair up the right, like, you know, combo pieces in your hand, and then shuffle the rest back. Say, I don't need these extras, I don't need these doubles, get them back in. Um, and it helps, like, just fix your hands. Goes and matches, another one that's, like, really powerful here. I mean, literally, our entire extra deck, except for Ulti Gaia Pelio and, what, Nibiru? <laughs> Those are the only non-win monsters you would even ever consider summoning in this deck. So if we were ever in a format where Goza Match was like too insanely good that if you can play it, you have to play it, I definitely think that'd be interesting. Or maybe just a side deck option for now when you know you're going first against a deck that wants to combo off and go into a bunch of different attributes. You hit him with the Goza and you just stop them from being able to leave their like initial attributes, which is really strong. Um... And also you could play like more stuff like Trap Trick, and I guess in this same vein you could play any number of like other good normal traps that would work with Trap Trick utility-wise. You could play like an Artifact Package for going first. You could play different Dimension Ground, again like kind of like a single turn uh, Fisher or Macro, but it's like searchable off of Trap Trick, so that's pretty cool. Heavy Storm Duster if you run into like back row matchups, like stuff like that. So there's a lot of utility here, and there's a lot of other cards you could consider for this deck, but this is the list I have now. This is what I'm looking at, at least for like the current state and where the future kind of looks like for Ritual Beasts, and I think they just, they're really going to benefit from the huge buff and consistency um, with being able to just search whichever other combo piece you're looking for off of win, or being able to just get a, a draw, a plus, a plus one off Extravagance and dig into your deck just so nice for consistency and i think that's where the deck's really going to be feeling uh the buff that it's gotten recently so that'll pretty much do it here for me um on this little like online deck profile looking at the future of ritual beast guys let me know your thoughts down below what do you think about this deck in the future do you think this like maybe when we do get the win monster do you think this could be a legitimate option as like a rogue deck i don't think it'll ever really see like tier one status again but maybe as a rogue deck that can do some pretty cool turn one setups that are like very sticky the monsters are tagging out they've got some nice disruptions you know stuff like that combine that stuff together it does get pretty scary so let me know your thoughts on uh, the future of Ritual Beasts. And as always, guys, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff from me in the future. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.